There are times where you need to go fast, push forward, and get things done quickly. And there are times where you need to slow down, assess things carefully, plan with foresight, and execute with great perseverance. I happen to be in those latter times with my big boat project. Let me show you what I mean. Right now, I'm laying the foundation for everything that comes in the future. The smallest detail, the slightest oversight, can have massive consequences down the line. And with that in mind, let me show you how I started building the cabin for my boat. I got a pack of 6 meter long, 80 by 50 steel square tubes. I also got a set of slightly bent 50 by 50 square tubes. And so with that, I'm gonna build the frame for the future cabin of this boat. First, I have to shorten the long square tubes a little, because when you buy the steel in this standardized format, they're always a bit over 6 meters long. Once the tubes are cut to exactly 6 meters length, I prepare the ends for welding. I'm gonna put these tubes along the sides of the deck to create the outline for the future cabin. Once perfectly aligned, I lock the two ends with a clamp and set up the welding gear. I tech weld them at first and then firmly weld the two pieces together. And once I ground down the protruding welds, I have a 12 meter long square tube as if it had come this way. Moving on to the other side where I repeat the exact same thing. With this, I have the outline of the cabin defined. I leave just enough space to place half a foot to walk around the outside of the boat, just in case the need ever comes up. The two long tubes I just built are of course just the bottom part of the walls they will later be a part of, but I'm not gonna put you through the exact same thing one more time, because at this point of the story, I moved my boats back down to the southeast of Berlin to the area I call my home. Only a few days after throwing in the anchor for the first time, I first had to clear out some space on the deck. At this point, we already got rid of most of the junk that was lying there, so now I had space to create the outer frame of the first wall. Trying to weld here completely off the grid, I thought I would give it a try with only this small generator and although I was welding with relatively high settings on the welder, it couldn't build up enough heat to allow the welds to penetrate properly into the material. So I cut this up again, got myself a bigger generator and decided overall on a different approach. This time I would first attach the long square tube onto the deck and then place the vertical beams on top. The deck is slightly curved, so I'm gonna have to add some supports underneath the square tube. I use this 6mm thick steel flat profile so I can create stacks of different height. I quickly weld these together. Clean them up a little. And so these little supports will help me get the long square tubes into the right shape. Now the square tube looks much straighter than before and for the time being I'm just gonna leave those supports there loosely so I can make some fine adjustments later on. I also cut a few thinner strips of flat profile so I can make very precise height adjustments. I'm also gonna use these strips to align the square tube along its longitudinal axis. Once I feel that I got it balanced properly I'm gonna weld it onto the deck.
Next, I'm gonna measure and mark six equal distance segments of about two meters length, and then I can start putting up the first vertical beams. I'll start here at the rear, and then I'm gonna tack weld this one in place. I put a second vertical beam at the opposite end. A friend came over to help me to hold the beams while I do the welding. We managed to get the first two beams aligned pretty well, so now all we have to do is to place the other five beams in between, make sure they are all aligned, and then place the long square tube on top and we're done, right? Well, I chose a bit of a different approach in which I'm gonna place the vertical beams alternating on both of the long square tubes, always leaving one out on one side or the other, and then later we will kind of scissor the two pieces together. You will see in just a moment. So here, every other vertical beam is attached to either the lower or the upper long square tube. Before we can raise up the wall, we have to clear out more space on the deck. And so here we are, ready to raise the structure and create the first wall. But before we do that, I'm gonna mark the positions of the vertical beams onto the two long square tubes for the other side, so that if I'm off by a few millimeters on a given vertical beam, the same deviance will be transferred onto the other wall at the same spot, and in this way, we retain the symmetry overall. After getting the two tubes out of the way and preparing the area on the deck we need for this maneuver, we pull half the structure a bit back and lay it down on its side. I'm gonna weld on a few points of attachment so that the open ends of the vertical beams can lock into those. And with that, we are all set to raise the structure. In this first try, some of the tech welds didn't hold so well. We tried to raise it anyway, but the whole thing just seemed very unstable, so we put it back down to try one more time. I quickly welded the broken beam back on. Alright, now on to the second try. Here you can see what I mean by scissoring the two pieces together. And there you have it. As simple as that, we raised up the first wall. I would then run around to secure the structure by adding some clamps and placing a few tech welds. Once the structure was secured, we could take a step back and marvel not just at the sheer size of this wall, but also how straight everything is right off the bat. Next I would finish the job on my own, adding a few tech welds wherever needed and making sure the structure can hold up on its own for maybe a few days without tipping over. Alright now, let's tackle the other side and this time we'll go a bit faster, not just here in the video, but also in reality. We put up the entire side in just one day, whereas the other side took us about three days. I'm starting once again by placing the first and last pillars, my loyal friend always at my side to help me out, and in this way we manage to attach all the vertical beams in a record time. We cleared the deck once again and laid the structure flat on its side. Once again I'm adding these points of attachment, this time I welded them on in a forward leaning angle so that the square tubes can hook onto them more easily. Right now we are ready to raise up the second wall. There we go. Now I have to secure it quickly to relieve my friends of their duty. And so once I secured the structure, I finish up by tech welding all the parts together. Always making six points at each side of the vertical beams. Now for the next chapter of this build, we have to go back 
to our old location once more to work on those slightly bent roof beams. Over a length of about 5 meters, they have an elevation of 50 millimeters. With the long square tubes for the walls already aligned on the deck, I put the roof beams on top to get the measurement for where to cut. I'm gonna cut them in a way that the long flap remains on one side, which I can then hammer down to close up the open tube. I'm gonna weld this shut later on, because I'm currently waiting for a new welder to arrive. Now back to the present day, here we attach the first roof beam. This will add a lot of strength and stability to the entire structure. And so now, all I had to do is to prepare the remaining roof beams. Some I just had to trim a little, others I had to cut from scratch. I then had to figure out how to attach these roof beams all by myself. Well, I would simply use a lashing strap, tie up the beam on one side, then lift it up from the other side without fear of it falling down. With a clamp on the other side, I could now securely weld on this side, and good thing I wasn't welding with gas on this day because it was extremely windy. Sometimes I would use a tension strap to pull the walls together so that the roof beams can fit precisely. And so with this simple technique I put up the remaining roof beams. Here we go for the last one. And so here is the finished result. As simple as that, you can build a steel structure on top of an old barge boat. I was surprised how straight and properly aligned everything turned out without me putting much effort into this, other than taking good measurements and making sure all the parts have equal length and are positioned at equal distance from each other. I was also surprised how well this holds together with only tack welds. Anyway, it's a huge relief one of the last big unknown elements of this project. But, as always, we did it. Big thanks to my friends who helped, huge thanks to you for supporting the channel, and see you soon.